Hey everyone, it's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, and in today's video, I'm going to be answering a question that was sent in from one of our viewers, her name is Paula, and Paula was wondering what a typical day of practice is supposed to look like. Well, my answer to Paula was that there really is no such thing as a typical day of practice because everyone has different practice schedules. Some people have only one or two events that they coach. A state like I'm in, Rhode Island, we have shot, disc, hammer, and javelin. So there's actually four throwing events and typically it's one coach with those four events. So there's no such thing as a typical day of practice. And Paula had given me what her basic kind of schedule is going to look like for the upcoming season, which for her starts on Monday. And it looks like this. They basically have practice every day from 325 until five o'clock. So they have one hour and 35 minutes of practice every single day. So they also in, uh, she's going to be coaching javelin, shot put, and discus. And she has a smaller team of about 10 throwers on average that come out to work with her um, throughout, throughout the day. So she's wondering how to set up a typical day of practice with that in mind. Paula, my advice to you would be to not set up your practices day by day or else you're going to be going crazy. I would look at it as a month by month or a week by week type process. So the first month of practice, that beginning part of practice, you may not have any meets for the first couple of weeks that your team is out to practice. So what I would do is I would try to get in the weight room two days per week, and then I would try to be out at the circles as often as I possibly, possibly could. So here's what I would do. On Monday, again, this is when you don't have a track meet. On Monday, I would do shot put for the first 40 minutes or so of practice, and then I would get in the weight room um, at the end of practice. So more than likely, you're gonna have like a five to 10 minute active warm up. So that's gonna take some time off of your day. You're gonna have five to 10 minutes of when your kids are just kind of fooling around, farting around, going to get equipment, walking over to the circle. You know, the head coach might give uh, one or two announcements or something like that. So you're already wasted about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so of your practice. That's only gonna give you about an hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes left to work with your kids. So I would do probably about 40 minutes or so of shot put and then get to the weight room for the last 35, 40 minutes or so of practice on that Monday. On the Tuesday, again, you're still going to have about an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes after the warm up and the coaches announcements and all that stuff. So I would split that day right in half. I would do javelin for the first half of that day, discus for the second half of that day or whatever you want to do. On the Wednesday, you're going to keep the same schedule as Monday where you're going to be throwing shot and then in the weight room. On Thursday, you're gonna have javelin and discus once again. And then Friday could be like an athlete's choice. So if the vast majority of your athletes all do shot put and they all do discus, then you're gonna make that a shot put and discus day. If a lot of your athletes need the most amount of help, maybe in discus, then you're gonna make that the priority of the day. So Friday is kinda of gonna be like a coach's choice. Whatever you think they need the most work on, that's what you're gonna do. Now, once your track meets start up, you're going to have track meets that are going to fall right in the middle of your week. And it's kind of a pain in the butt and it's kind of hard to work around, but here are some tips to do that. So say, for example, you have a track meet on a Tuesday. On Monday, you are going to do shot put and lift. You're going to have that dual meet on Tuesday. So it's okay to lift before dual meet because they don't usually count for anything. You're going to have that dual meet on the Tuesday. Wednesday, you're going to do maybe discus and then lift. Thursday maybe will be shot put and javelin. Friday is maybe discus and javelin. So you're trying to get each event at least two times per week. You're trying to get in the weight room two times per week. And then you're going to have one or two sessions that are left over where you can work on the more popular events or where you can work on the events that you think need the most amount of help. At the end of the season, this is your championship time of year. So at this point, things should be kind of falling into place for you. Because it's the championship time of year, most of the meets are going to be on the weekends or on Fridays. So you can try to stick to the same schedule that you had at the very beginning time of the year. A lot of your athletes may not have qualified for those championship meets, but still have them keep coming out and keep working with you and keep learning. Um, a lot of the athletes that did qualify for those championship meets 
may have only qualified in one or two events, not all three, so you know exactly what to pinpoint and you know exactly what to work on. If somebody qualified in shot and discus, you probably shouldn't spend any time working on javelin with them until next year. But if they did qualify in shot and discus, split up their time so half the time is working on shot, half the time is working on discus. The biggest strategy that you can do from the very start of the season is start coaching your athletes like you're explaining it to another coach. So explain to your athletes not just what to correct, but you want to explain why you're correcting it. You want to explain kind of how these corrections are going to help. And you really want to educate them, almost like you're a coach trying to teach a brand new coach what they need to work on. What this is going to do is it's going to create little assistant coaches with you. So maybe you're more advanced throwers, your older throwers, your team captains, they might be able to work with the younger throwers while you're not with them at the circle. So Paula, thank you for the email. Hopefully this helps explain exactly how to kind of segment your week. I definitely would not look at it sort of as a daily practice because every day is going to be different, but look at the week and look at the month and the time of the season that you're in, beginning of the season, middle of the season where there's lots of random meets and championship season where all the meets are at the end. Take a look at your season, plan it out week by week, and then you'll be able to figure out what you should be doing every single day. Hey, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. Make sure you go to EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Check out everything that we have on the website. Check out the blog, the overnight camp, the online coaching, the downloadable ebooks, the downloadable DVDs, and everything that we have to offer, including our throwing equipment. Make sure if you do, check out the throwing equipment. Try coupon code MASSTRACK10 to get 10% off your order along with free shipping. Thanks again so much for checking out the video. I'll talk to you guys soon.